Bringing us back to the garden where he looked into Adam and saw himself. Who is God's image? Well, God's a lot of things. But what is he in the Bible? What, is, what do we know God as? God is love. So he puts himself in the man and fills the man with all that he is. And out of that fullness, he sees him naming all the animals. They're walking in agreement. They're walking in oneness. Adam's flowing in his identity. And he says, man, there's none comparable to this guy. It's not good he'd be alone. Why? Because he's lonely? No, because love is profuse and has to multiply. It needs an outlet to minister and manifest. He didn't make woman because man was lonely. He made woman because he was filled with God. And woman's created values to receive the pure, amazing, pure love of God through a covenant man that will love her in Christ Jesus like Christ loves the church. See, it's out of the fullness of God that he brought forth the woman anyway. The woman wasn't even on the scene until God was fully in the man, expressed in the man. The man was naming all the animals and God said, wow, yeah, let it be so. Let me. He never corrected him. Why? Because Adam was flowing in the authority of God. He looked just like his father. And at the time when God saw man looking just like him and flowing just like him, he said, you know, it's not good this fellow be alone. He has no one comparable. Is that because he was lonely? Or is that because he had nowhere to multiply? He had nowhere to take the beauty of who he'd become and spread it across the earth. So he didn't make another lump of clay. He reached right inside of the man, the fullness of God. And he reached in and pulled out what was already there, a woman. And he made the woman. The, the one, two, so the two could enjoy being one. About, look at verse 23 of chapter 2. Man, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman. You know, you hear preachers say, whoa, man. And, and because she was taken where? Out of man. She wasn't another lump of clay. She wasn't another lump of clay. She was, God and man and woman were all one in the heart of God from the beginning. He saw them before they were seen. He, he created man. He breathed into him the life of God. And out of that life, he brought forth woman. He didn't even make another lump of clay. It was out of the man. So out of God and the man, he multiplied himself. That's why two becoming one is synergistic. It's Because so, it's two wills. It's two souls. It's two mindsets yielding to truth and becoming one. And it's greatly powerful. Believe that, that God made man in his image and he made man to overtake the world and just rule the world in love till the whole earth was filled with his glory. You know Psalms 8. You know Hebrews 2. What is man that thou art mindful of him that he would even visit him, right? That he would give him dominion over the works of his hands. That he's his crowning creation and glory on the earth. That man is something to God. And it's like, what is this about man? I'll tell you what it is. It's his created value. It's his destiny. It's that he can live filled with God's spirit and manifest the love of God. Because we love things and love life in a sense where we're using God to get us through and have a better day and all that stuff. And we forget that the only reason we're here is to manifest him. And the church has taught herself into a jam. We think he's here to bless us. No, he's here to make us like him so the world can see who he is through our lives. He wants the earth filled with his glory and man is the glory of God when he's walking in the image of God. Psalms 8 says that. That's not heresy. Hebrews 2 declares that. It's not blasphemy. Man created in the image of God is the revealing of the glory of God on the earth. Come on, he put him in a little garden called Eden. Do you guys know that? And he told him to be fruitful and multiply. That seems weird. Why do you put him in a little two-room apartment Tell them to tend and keep it and be fruitful and multiply. At some point, they're going to grow out the apartment. Why didn't they just give them the whole world? Well, he put them in that little place and told them to just seize that ground, take the ground, work that, and, and submit or subdue that and be fruitful and multiply. Why? So that as they were fruitful and multiplied, they would span out and cover the earth with God's glory. So God created man, whoa, in his own image. In the image of God, He created him. Do you see He keeps repeating this? Let us make man in our image. So God did it. He created man in His image. In the image of God, He created him. Sounds almost redundant. He says it twice. He just... He wants us to see that. Right? And then guess what He did? Man, He did not curse us. He blessed us. And said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion. That's not some power trip. 
What did He do? He created us in His image and then said, multiply and fill the earth with My image. He's not talking about people, numbers. He's emphasizing that He made us in His image. Now fill the earth and multiply it and fill the earth with Me. You get it? See, it's one thing to say you're a son. It's one thing to say you're a daughter. It's another thing to walk in the image and nature of God and understand it's your destiny, your calling, your birthright. Your birthright is to walk in the image of God. And the image of God is love. And I become love and, oh my goodness, I love you. It's not, I love him, he loves me. Bunch of weak-willed, mistake-making people. Well, who needs people anyway? I got God and God loves me. And I don't need you. I don't care what you think because Jesus loves me. That is twisted, whacked, and deceived. The only reason you have this is so it produces this. That's why God made us in His image so His glory would cover the earth as we'd be fruitful and multiply. It's not a mist coming from heaven that's going to lay over the earth. It's you and I knowing who we are and living it. The glory of God revealed. Christ in us, the hope of Glory. When Moses was in the wilderness, I saw you, Rachel. When Moses was in the wilderness and the people weren't getting it and they're obstinate and they're stiff-necked and they're just cycling and, and Moses comes and says, would you forgive him, God? Would you, God? And he's coming as a priest. He's coming as a shadow even of Christ and he's just a good leader. And he's there crying out for the people. He went through a lot of clothes, guys, in the wilderness. A lot of dust on the head, a lot of wardrobe. <laughs> Good. He's praying for the people, right? And God says, okay. Yeah, I'll forgive them. But they're going to eat the fruit of this stuff. And there's he's this reaping, sowing, there's law, sin, and death. There's stuff going on there. But here's the statement he makes. He says, but Moses, as surely as I live, I'm telling you, as surely as I live, the whole earth will be filled with my glory. You know what he was saying? He was prophesying redeemed people in and through Christ Jesus that were dead to themselves and alive unto God. He was saying as God in faith, I see what they look like now, but I see what I made men to be. And I'm telling you, Moses, they ain't getting it and they're spinning and cycling. And you better believe I'll forgive because I'm a forgiving God. But I'm telling you, Moses, he was prophesying. Surely as I live, the whole earth will be filled with my glory. He's talking about people that understand why they're created. He's talking about the church of Jesus Christ. That's what he was talking about. He was talking about his people born again. With a new heart in them and a new spirit. Taking out the old stony heart and putting in a heart of flesh that's pliable and workable. When they were in that garden, be fruitful, multiply. What was God's plan? They were the revelation of God on the earth. They were made for God's image. So they were the glory of God revealed. That is not blasphemous. That is the truth. The word glory means any manifest attribute of God. You don't need a three-day conference, even though you could do one on glory. I'm not making fun. Very simply defined, the glory of God is any manifest attribute of God. So the Christ in you is the hope of the glory of God. What's that mean? The Christ in you is the hope of manifesting God. Why did he put Christ in you? To get you back to what you were created to be, his image. This is so simple. (laughs) So he makes man in his image. Man is the glory of God revealed on the earth. The nature of God. The love of God.
gospel. Remember, we're created in his image for his glory. We're to manifest God. He put flesh on men to manifest what's on the inside. And that's God, right? Satan wants to come and reproduce himself after his own kind. You follow me? So man fell in sin. Jesus came, redeemed us. We're all born again. And now once again, the spirit of God can live in us. We're the body of Christ. OK, I just keep going back there in a nutshell in that there's a lot we could say, but that this, this isn't the time to say that. I think you catch what I'm saying. So Psalms 115 says the earth he did give to the children of men. He told Adam to subdue the earth and have dominion over the earth. That was God's choice, not man's. He gave the earth to the children of men. The reason we don't cry out to God is because God gave us the authority through the name of Jesus to represent his will and his desire. So we pray for the sick and command the sick to be healed. We command the mountain to be moved. Why? Because we represent who God is and what God's saying on the earth. And that's his idea, not mine. It's not my doctrine. It's not my sermon. It's his. Do you get it? We're his children. Life. So Adam's in the garden, he's naming all the animals. How many animals are there? How many did he name? Gazillions, right? It's millions, right? And he's naming them. And, he, and God never corrected him. He never upstaged him. He never said, he never said, oh, Adam, come on, that's silly. You can't name it that. Everything Adam named, the animals, God said, that's awesome, boy. That is so cool. A what, a zebra? Yeah, I like it. Why? What's the picture there? The picture is God and man one. God's wisdom in the man. God allowing man to subdue the works of his hands, to govern the earth in the authority of God. Not on some tangent, some presumptuous, proudful venture. In oneness with God. He had a relationship. He didn't have a religion. Adam didn't lose religion. He lost relationship. And when he lost relationship, he lost identity. And when identity was lost, humanity was in big trouble. This whole thing about the gospel is the restoration of your and my identity. It's back to the truth of who we really are. His love. So when God makes man, he makes man in his image. So man is standing there filled with God. And man has the authority to subdue the earth, not be subdued. You hear me? God gave man the authority to subdue the earth, not be subdued. There was not an ounce of fear in man. There was not an ounce of worry, stress, or strife. 